A Sheer Disaster, written and narrated by Christina Chang. I knew I should have told her to stop. I just knew it. How could you do this to me? Marinette stood outside the Parisian hair salon and stared at her miserable appearance reflected in the tinted glass of the storefront window. She thought back over the last few minutes and felt a second wave of panic and dismay as she recalled the fatal sound of scissors clipping together and the light thud of cherished hair falling against her shoulder. A few minutes earlier, Marinette sat and watched in horror as the stylist executed the irreversible deed, while Marinette listened helplessly to the hasty attempts to cover it up, which only made the situation worse. Marinette bit the inside of her lip and struggled to hold back tears. It's just hair, she told herself fiercely, gritting her teeth, but a storm of frustration and bitter emotion swelled up, pressing against her heart and threatening to spill over as she sat in the chair and stared down at the damp clumps that had dropped to the floor. She caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror and nearly crumpled with shame. She looked awful. The two short bangs made her forehead glaringly obvious, and the uneven layers only seemed to make her nose stand out. She sucked in a choking breath and gave a curt nod to the hairdressers as she pushed the door open and burst out into the streets, scarcely seeing where she was going through her blurry vision. Why had she agreed to get a haircut now of all times? Tomorrow was her special date with her fiancé, Adrian, and afterwards they were supposed to meet with his esteemed father and go over plans Marinette had come up with for their next fashion show. How would Gabriel Ogress listen to any of her ideas about fashion with her looking like this? And Adrian, what would he think of it? Having to show up and act proud of his fiancée while she looked like she'd chopped at her hair with a buzzsaw and had the face of a total weirdo? A sob slipped out and the ache in her chest grew stronger as she thought of facing the love of her life looking like a scruffy disaster. She angrily brushed the tears from her face and tried to steal herself for her entrance back home, preparing a composed response for her mother and grandmother, who she knew would be eagerly awaiting her arrival. It had been her grandma who insisted she get her hair done by a professional in honor of her recent 21st birthday, and she had generously paid for what she considered to be the best salon in the city. Normally her mom had always cut her hair, but Marinette knew there was no arguing with her grandma Gina, and besides, she had been looking forward to trying out a more complicated and trendy style. If only she had known what a mistake that would be. Marinette sighed and gently rubbed a hand across her cheeks in an attempt to hide any leftover signs of tears, before briskly pushing open the bakery door and gluing a brave smile to her face. Ah, Marinette, you are back already, her grandmother exclaimed, bustling over and pulling Marinette into a rough hug before pulling away to get a better look at her head. Let me see how you... She stopped short and didn't bother to hide her displeasure. Oh, mummy, what have they done to you? Marinette gave a helpless shrug as her grandmother began tugging and fussing at her hair. Sabine had hurried out of the back room when she heard Marinette arrive, but pulled back after seeing Gina's critical involvement and instead shot Marinette a sympathetic look from the doorframe. You went to the place I sent you? What did you tell them, darling? It looks terrible. I would not have paid so much money if I knew they were going to have you come out looking like that. Marinette tried to stay calm. I'm sorry, Grandma. Believe me, if I could have stopped her, I would have. Oh, well, it could have been worse. No need to cry over it. I had a terrible haircut right before we attending a gala in Spain, and you know what I did? I marched right up to the front of the room and gave a toast. For the next two months, I held my head up high with a look that dared anyone to say something bad about it. You'll be fine, dear. In fact, it's good for character development. Marinette bristled inwardly, but tried to control her anger. She knew her grandma meant well, and it's true that she shouldn't care what other people might think. Yet the way she said it as if Marinette had needed to get a bad haircut and was just being a baby about it made it difficult for her to choke down her pride. Thanks, Grandma. I'll try to do that. There's a good girl. Gina pinched her cheek affectionately, then strolled out of the room. Marinette turned to head upstairs and found her mom still standing there. Sabine rested a comforting hand on her shoulder. Don't worry, dear. It'll grow back before you know it. Thanks, Mom. She gave Sabine a quick hug and was suddenly hit with a renewed sense of loss and felt a tearful sting return to her eyes. Adrian is upstairs waiting for you. Marinette pulled away in alarm. What? He's here? Sabine gave her an apologetic smile. 
He stopped by a few minutes ago. Something about looking things over for tomorrow, and I already sent him up to your room. Marinette pressed a hand to her forehead. Of course, they had agreed he would stop by to help her organize a presentation for the meeting with his father, and she'd originally been excited that he would be one of the first to see her new hairstyle. Marinette groaned softly. Well, I guess I should get this over with, she muttered, then gave a half-smile to her mom. Thanks for the heads up. See you later. She quickly kissed her mother's cheek, then made her way up to the top floor of their apartment. She had hoped she would at least have time to collect herself and freshen up before meeting Adrian, but now it seemed there was nothing to do other than begin the slow, agonizing trudge upstairs to see what he would think. Marinette timidly pushed up the trap door that led to her bedroom, peeping in to see Adrian sitting on the chase looking over a notebook with some of her latest designs. He caught sight of her, his face lighting up with a wide smile as he leapt to his feet and made his way over to her. Hey, Marinette. He gave her his hand and helped her up the last couple steps, smiling warmly. How did your... His voice trailed off as he noticed the redness surrounding her face, and she watched as his eyes moved from her forehead to her shoulders and back to her face again. She took a deep breath and gave him a shaky smile. Well, it didn't go as well as I'd hoped, but... Her resolve quivered as she heard the tremble in her voice, and seeing his caring green eyes stare so intently into hers, made all the walls she tried to build come crashing down. Actually, it's terrible, and I feel so stupid. His eyes widened with concern, and he reached a hand out to steady her, but she'd already begun pacing the small space of her bedroom. I mean, seriously, what was I thinking? I should never have let my grandma convince me to go to a real salon when my mom has been doing a perfect job for years. But really, how hard is it to cut the bangs in the place I told them to instead of three inches above? Marinette threw her hands out in frustration as she continued to pace back and forth, while Adrian watched her attentively from off to the side. It's so annoying and frustrating, but it's not even the part that bothers me the most. What bothers me is that I even care about it at all. She turned to face him, the anger fading out of her voice, and in its place was a mournful emptiness. I know I shouldn't care about how I look or what other people will think, and I don't really care, it's just... Her throat tightened, cutting off her thoughts, and she fixed her eyes miserably onto the ground, trying to hide the tears slipping down her cheeks, when she felt a steady warmth around her as Adrian pulled her into a gentle hug. He held her silently for a moment, stroking her disheveled hair she let out all the sorrow and bitterness through a flow of unchecked tears. It's okay to be sad, you know, he said softly, his head resting lightly atop hers as he gently swayed them back and forth, her sobs slowly turning to hiccuping sighs. A bad haircut may seem like a small thing, but that doesn't mean you aren't hurt by it emotionally. It can be devastating to lose something so personal to you. It feels like you lost a part of yourself. And all the confidence and dreams you've been building up are suddenly crushed by one fatal cut, leaving you to wonder if things will ever be the same again. Marinette sniffled quietly in agreement, her heart slowly calming to the beat of his, surrounded by the comfort of his arms and leaning into his hug as he continued to sway them together in a soothing manner. I just feel so ugly, she admitted quietly, her words muffled as she pressed her head tightly against his shirt. Adrian gave her a comforting squeeze. I know it feels that way, Bugaboo, but not even a sheer disaster can make you look ugly. Marinette shook her head dismissively, but couldn't help smiling at his attempt to make a pun. You're as beautiful as the day I met you, and you will always look beautiful to me. Sure, your hair might look kind of terrible right now, and we all have days when we don't look our best, but that doesn't mean you'll never like the way you look ever again. He pulled her gently back and rested his hands on his shoulders causing her to look up into his eyes. But your hair and your looks aren't what make you beautiful, Marinette. Your beauty goes far deeper than any scissors could ever touch. It's the way your eyes twinkle as if they know a wonderful secret. It's the way you smile and twirl around your room when you think no one is looking. It's the brave kindness and determined thoughtfulness you show to others. The compassion and love you so freely give to all those around you the courage you have to do things when other people would have just given up. It's the way you laugh, the way you smile, the way you sing, the way you always crush me when you play Ultimate Mecha Strike. 
He leaned closer with a teasing smile, and Marinette couldn't help but catch his playful yet earnest mood. The way you create things and think of things no one else would. The way you always seem to know when to come for someone and when to give them their space. You make mistakes just like anyone else. That just shows you're always trying. He tucked an uneven strand of hair gently behind her ear, and his voice fell to a more serious tone. You are beautiful, Marinette, inside and out, and I cherish every moment I spend with you. Marinette stared up at him, eyes blinking slowly as she felt his words sink in, and a warm glow made its way to her heart. She smiled and ducked her head shyly, her face still shining from the praise her beloved partner had showered her with. Adrian pulled her close again with a wide smile and lightly kissed the top of her head. Feline better, my lady, he asked, looking down at her with a playful twinkle in his eye. Marinette nodded and stepped away from him, feeling her old confidence coming back to her, just the way it had when he reassured her as Cat Noir all those times before, making her feel ready to take on the world. Much better, thanks, Kitty. Though it will be interesting to see the looks I get, especially tomorrow. Adrian shrugged with a reassuring grin. Don't worry about them. If anything, they'll probably think it's a new style, and the next thing you know, it'll be the front page of Style Queen magazine, showcased by Audrey Bourgeois herself. They both burst out laughing at the idea of the famously contemptuous fashion icon boasting an erratic haircut, and soon they were cheerfully discussing plans for the next day and collecting the pieces Marina had prepared for a demonstration the next evening for Gabriel Grest and his associates. Marinette was just about finished packing the last of her displays when Adrian's phone buzzed, and she watched as he reluctantly took it out of his pocket and read the message with a disappointed look. It's Natalie. She says father would like me to head home now. Marinette nodded, but as she stood to watch him go, she felt a sudden anxiety rise in her heart, and all the nervousness flooded back over her as she thought again of standing before all those fashion critics sporting her new look. Adrian had moved to give her a hug, but stopped when he noticed the worry in her eyes. Seeming to read her mind, he tenderly brushed her tired bangs away from her forehead and smiled encouragingly. Hey, don't worry about tomorrow. I'll be so fascinated by your incredible designs, they won't even notice what your hair looks like. And I'll be right beside you the entire time. Marinette smiled, though her face still held a hint of uncertainty. Adrian gave her a confident smirk. So what if they think they rule the world of fashion? You're amazing, just the way you are. And who cares what they or anyone else thinks? Marinette sent him a teasing look, her eyes twinkling with a wry smile. Easy for you to say, Mr. Model of the Year, since he was born. Adrian opened his mouth in protest and threw a hand to his chest in mock offense. Oh, really? His eyes quickly scanned the contents of her cluttered desk and brightened as he found what he was looking for. He turned back to her with a determined grin and exclaimed, I'll prove it. In one swift motion, he snatched up a pair of fabric scissors and grabbed a clump of his hair from the front of his head and gave it a vigorous chop. Marinette gaped at him as she stared at the golden bundle of fluffy strands clustered against his fist, then burst out laughing and gazed at him in disbelief. Your father is going to kill you. Do you still think I'm beautiful, my love? He yeah, asked, sending her a pleading look though she could tell he was struggling to keep from laughing at the shock on her face. She looked into his sparkling green eyes, their gorgeous color and endless thoughtfulness pulling her in just as much as they had all those years before. She couldn't help but admire the playful smile teasing across his lips, and the warmth and vibrance that emanated from his ever-wondrous self. He was more than beautiful to her, even with the ragged blonde shred sticking out over his forehead. Of course, my kitty. She said with a laughing smile, though she threw her arms around him and gave him a heartfelt squeeze. Thank you for your heroic sacrifice and for cheering me up. You have the most beautiful soul in the world. He chuckled and squeezed her back, then reluctantly pulled away as he felt another insistent buzz from his phone. We'll have to go. He moved to throw the wad of hair into the wastebasket, but Marinette caught his hand and wrapped her fingers around his. Wait, I want to save it. Save it? He glanced down at the crumpled remnants in his fist and gave her a questioning look. You know I can grow more, right, princess? He asked, raising his eyebrows quizzically and using the nickname he'd given her as Cat Noir. Yes, silly, but it means so much to me, and I want to always remember the sacrifice you made. 
Besides, she added, her eyes twinkling mischievously, when we're both old and bald, we'll have this to remind us that hair doesn't matter. She plucked it out of his hands and slipped it into a small glass jar she had near her desk, then turned back to see him staring at her with a fond smile. Only you would think of turning it into something beautiful like that, milady, he said, lightly kissing her cheek before heading down the steps to leave. Only you would be crazy enough to cut it all off in the first place, she called after him, just as his head was about to disappear through the trap door of her bedroom. He popped his head back up and sent her a playful grin, then fully disappeared from view. Marinette smiled with a fond sigh, and absently twisted the silvery ring on her finger as she glanced at a small glint of gold tucked away atop her desk. Adrian was right. Nothing could change who they were deep down, or come between the love they had for each other, and as long as they had each other, it didn't matter what anyone else might think. She would take her grandma's advice and hold her head up high, and take comfort in remembering her mom's promise that it would one day grow back. Until then, she would remind herself to appreciate her inner beauty, and whenever she felt discouraged, she would call to mind the moment she and Adrian walked into the showroom of the prestigious mansion and remember the imperishable look of horror that flashed across Mr. Agrest's face. Thanks for listening. I think most of us can relate to getting a bad haircut at one time or another, and this idea popped in my head when one of my friends went through a particularly disheartening haircut recently, and I was trying to think of things to say that would come for them, and then I just kind of turned into a Max Slayer book fan fiction, and that's what you're reading now. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and if you ever get a bad haircut, I hope you remember that it doesn't change who you are deep down. And it'll eventually grow back. Anyway, I'll stop rambling now and hope you have a good day. Bye!